Welcome to MMAfighting.com's post-UFC 190 wrap-up. I'm Ariel Hawani here in Rio de Janeiro. It's something like 4.30 a.m. I'm being joined by our very own Guilherme Cruz, and we are all still buzzing after seeing Ronda Rousey knock out Betch Cohea in 34 seconds. That means her last three fights combined have lasted 64 seconds. This is your first time covering a Ronda Rousey fight, your first time seeing one in person. How do you put it into words? It was crazy. It was amazing. I uh, never expect her to, to win like that. You know, a one punch knockout, uh, batch face planning it was just impressive. And the crowd reaction, it was, the night was amazing. Who was the, the fan favorite at the end of the day? Because we talked about this on the preview show. Who are they cheering for in there? They just cheer for, for both. They were okay. Yeah. But right after the, the, the fight ended, it was just chanting round and round. It was, it was amazing. Yeah. Are you emotional like Sean Al Shadi right now? <laughs> no, I just sleepy. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes, it is quite late or early yeah, yeah. morning on Sunday. Do you feel like Betch was a little off? Like, you know, we, we often like to analyze, or at least I do, people's demeanors before these big title fights. And she wasn't BJ Penn before UFC 118 against Frankie Edgar where he was just kind of stoic and like a robot or Carla Esparza recently but she was just all fidgety and moody. it seemed like she was too nervous right yeah. she was there like all week all fight week I guess tonight was the the time to just cool down you know, just relax it's not the, the type of fight for you to just rush uh, I guess I guess Ronda if you rush that's not a good idea for you so I guess that that affect her tonight, being so emotional, so uh, uh, aggressive, not only in fighting, but her approach to the, to, the, to the fight. Or as you Brazilians like to say, relax, 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 relax. <laughs> Do you think that she had the wrong game plan? I don't know, I, I, I couldn't <laughs> really see what, what she tried to do. Like just, she got tagged and just uh, tried to, 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 to clinch and got knocked out. That's it. It's not like she threw a flying knee. She, right. she got that knocked out. So at this point, it seems, unless something crazy happens, that next for Ronda Rousey is Misha Tate. Do you care to see that fight a third time? Nah. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't care, but there are not a lot of other fighters uh, ready right now to, to, to fight Ronda, so that's the fight to make. If Cyborg's not available, uh, Holly Holm is not quite there yet, so that's a fight to make, but it's not that compelling anymore the third time. Last week, Cyborg said she was going to attend the event, but she wasn't here, right? Yeah, she wasn't. She wasn't. Do you have any idea why? No, nah, I don't know. She just tweeted like an hour ago or something that her next fight is going to be at 1.40. Okay. So that maybe indicate that she's trying to, to cut down for, for this, this next fight. We're moving in that direction. Yeah, hopefully. But I think you would agree with me. That's the fight everyone wants to see right now. If, if I had to put you on the spot, let's say they met at 140. Let's not, let's not say 135, even though that's what they want. Who do you pick in that fight? Ronda. Just as easy or a little tougher? No, it's tougher. Yeah. It should not be like a I minute. Mean, because Cyborg uh, has knockout power. She's strong. She's not easy to, to, to take down. She's working a lot on, on her jiu-jitsu and wrestling for years. But Ronda would be the, the favorite at 135 if, Ronda, if, if Cyborg can, can make that weight and 140. At 145, it won't ever happen, but uh, maybe Cyborg would be the, 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 the favorite. Who knows? In your I opinion? Know, I, don't, I, I don't know uh, Ronda would be the underdog against anyone. Right? In your opinion, is this young lady right over here, this face, is she the face of the UFC? She the biggest star in the sport. Yeah, yeah, she is. After tonight, after all this, yeah, she is. At least in Brazil, yeah. I don't know if in the U.S. I don't know how people in the U.S. Uh, see her mm -hmm. and see Connor or John Jones. Used to see John Jones, but here in Brazil, she's a star. It's impressive. Dana White. Speaking of historic nights, yeah. Dana White actually thanked the media at the end of this press conference, which is somewhat historic. And, and he said there was a huge turnout, one of their biggest ever. Being around all these Brazilian events, did you see new faces? Were, were there big outlets here that don't usually cover the UFC because of Ronda? No, we, we usually have big outlets for Rio events. So right. 
it was nothing like too crazy, but it was definitely way, way more than the last real card that was a fight night. But for UFC pay-per-view cards, that's it has more media here than they use the than the last uh, pay-per-view cards in Rio. But it was that much different, you know. We I guess, I guess we'll we'll see uh, Ronda in every news news newspaper on on, on Monday. Let's talk about the co-main event. Shogun Hua defeated Little Nog in a fight, in my opinion, that exceeded our expectations. Their first fight back in 2005 was amazing, one of the best fights of the last decade, but I think a lot of us didn't quite know what they would have. It was a great fight. Shogun took big shots. In the end, he won, but do you think he deserved to win that fight? Yeah, I think. I think yeah. he won two rounds one. Uh, Which rounds? The, the second and third. Okay. Uh, at the previous show, I said we, we, we shouldn't expect a great fight like 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 the first one, and they just delivered. Yeah. Uh, I think it was close. Like the third round was was really close with that guillotine in the end, but I think Shogun uh, was better the most part of the round. So I gave him the rub, but it was close. And the second round he won, but basically didn't didn't do much. And the first round he definitely lost. Do you want to see Little Nog fight again? Yeah, I think they should just fight each other so they, for the rest yeah. of their life. Yeah. Well, Shogun <laughs> said he's down to fight Rampage. Yeah. Do you like that idea for him next? I like if if they're healthy, just put them in in the next Japan card. That's a little too soon, I think. Rampage has some legal troubles that he has to ah, get yeah, through. Yeah, that's true. So maybe in Brazil, right. some main event in Brazil, easy for a fight night card. Speaking of Brazil, they did those two tough Brazil fights right before the co-main event, which a lot of people back home in the Buzz United kill. States, buzzkill, exactly. Do you think that was a mistake? And explain to them why they did that. They did that because uh, Global aired the whole season, and they were supposed to fight at the Hollywood card. They were supposed to be in Sao Paulo instead. Uh, so they had to put it on, on the main card, so Global would air it. So... That's it. Global said they wanted it, so they had to put it on. So global wants, global gets. Yeah, in Brazil, global wants, global gets. Is that relationship still strong? Yeah, there were some some rumors that uh, global wasn't that interested in the UFC anymore because they were, they were the, the ratings and stuff like that. But I don't think they uh, they will get rid of the UFC if they have a they they still have a contract. They are ne they are negotiation. They 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 are in neg negotiation for for a new one. But I don't think they are they are going anywhere. Global is, is too big for the UFC right. to want to to leave for for another one. Stefan Struve beats Big Nog afterwards. Dana White says he doesn't want to see Big Nog fight again, and Big Nog is actually in agreement. Are you okay with that? Are, are you done? With I mean, he took a lot of big shots, yeah. didn't get knocked out, but it, it feels like it's time, right? Yeah, he actually fought better than I expected yeah. him to fight. But uh, and I actually uh, I'm actually surprised that he, Big Nog. Uh, said that he agreed yeah. that because before the fight I was here in the the media room and I asked Big Nog's coach he was just hanging around here if Big Nog won if would have uh, announced his ret 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 retirement and uh, he said he would not he would mm -hmm. just want to keep fighting so if he wants but now it's like three losses in a row so that's not good for him like won three fights over the last nine so. yeah what do you think of the idea of Stefan Struve fighting Bigfoot Silva, who was also victorious tonight? It makes sense. Like they're both right next to each other in, in the rankings, and there are not a lot of names around uh, uh, in the heavyweight division that would make sense. So, how about Bigfoot pulling off a, a Frankie Edgar ran to the cage, didn't even <laughs> celebrate afterwards? I saw him backstage; he was going nuts with Alex Davis, but he even smiled after yeah. the win. He seemed—I don't, I don't know what to make of his demeanor. He. He was a very uh, serious and maybe a little too tense. He won. He, he defeated so the Hulk, but it was a different Bigfoot, right? Yeah, it was a big deal for him. He really needed that win. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> it was like it was crazy that when when he rushed the, to the octagon, met with the commission guy, yeah. just tear down his face. It was scary. Uh, there was a, a big night for him. He really needed that to come back to the to the win column. Uh, and we we spoke after the fight in the media scrum. He just like he's interested in maybe UFC bringing Fedor Emelianenko to do another fight. I who isn't? Yeah, who isn't? Yeah. Right. I don't think that would happen, but he he wants uh, he wants to fight at the Japan card. Yeah, yeah. So that would be interesting.
Speaking of big nights, Claudia Gadelia cements her place as the number one contender in the strawweight division. She's going to have a rematch against Ioana Jacek, a fight that happened in December. Ioana won a very close fight, UFC on Fox event in Phoenix. Were you impressed with her performance, a win over Jessica Aguilar, who some consider to be the best in the world? And who do you pick in the rematch? I didn't expect Gadelia to win like this. I expect her, her to win, but not the way she won. Uh, I was really, really impressed. And that's the fight to make. That's the best fight in the division. Uh, I believe that the, the UFC was actually hoping for this because mm -hmm. Gadelia is a popular name for quite quite some time and there's a history a rivalry there so that's a big fight I both fighters evolve a lot change a lot since that that, that first fight that's uh, I would probably favor because of the style of both fighters I would probably favor Claudia mm. but it's like razor thin you yeah know? Just like the first fight. Yeah. Looking forward to that very much. It seemed like she may have broken at least maybe a finger or a hand, so we'll see what happens there if she needs surgery. Last thing before we say goodnight or good morning, Damian Maya wins. He stops Neil Magny's winning streak at seven. Who do you want to see next from? The internet seems to think Gunnar Nelson, but that's kind of a step back as far as the rankings. What about you? He's, he already said he's not interested yeah. in Gunnar Nelson. He wants someone in the top five. Uh, the UFC needs to, to, to decide first who is going to get the next shot, sure. uh, make some matchmaking and see who's left for for Damian Maia. I don't know, maybe Tyron Woodley, Carlos Condit. Condit, Lawler, yeah. Woodley Hendricks, Matt Brown, Maia. Yeah. There it is. That, that, that works for me. All right. It's amazing. Yeah. Let's go get some acai. Yeah, please. Are they open? Right now? Are they open? At for breakfast? I doubt it. Okay. Maybe we'll wait a little bit. Eight, nine. That's fine. They are kicking us out of the HSBC arena here. Another historic night for Ronda Rousey. Another great event for the UFC here in Rio de Janeiro. This time it is headlined by Ronda Rousey defeating Betch Cohea in just 34 seconds. She knocks her out cold, walks away, and then says to her, don't cry, which is what Betch Cohea said to Ronda Rousey <laughs> yesterday at the weigh-ins. An amazing scene once again. It's an event. It's a spectacle. It's something we'll be talking about for many years to come. Ronda Rousey remains undefeated here in Brazil. Thank you so much for watching our coverage all week long from here in Rio de Janeiro. That is Guilherme Cruz. I am Ariel Hawani. We are off Monday because I am flying back home, so no MMA hour. We are back on Tuesday with some interesting gets. Hopefully, yes. Cross our fingers, American Airlines. So no MMA hour on Monday, but we are back on Tuesday, same time, 1 p.m. Eastern, same place, MMAfighting.com. We have a lot to discuss. Husimar Pagliaris acting a, a, little, uh, a little weird today once again at World Series of Fighting. It's normal, as they say here in Brazil. But we'll get to that on Tuesday. For now, we say goodnight. We say good morning. Thank you again for watching. We'll talk to you later on this week.